This is Jason from LetHimBe.com, and uh, today I'm going through a dead out. This is 1632. Um, it was caught last year. It came uh, from an eight-frame trap, and uh, it was it was caught sometime in July. And this is something you you risk when you catch a July swarm. Sometimes they do really well, but sometimes, just like any of them, they're going to expire. The biggest thing with trying to establish a treatment-free apiary is to not view this as a total loss. There's going to be yield that comes from this experience. Uh, these bees built up some comb in here. As you can see, I'm busting this apart. Once they were hived, as with all of my swarms, I don't, I don't mess with them. This this group failed to build up real well, and uh, but you can see they still built really good comb in there. And that's salvageable. I won't use this as a bait comb, but this will be a really good comb to seed bees down into a lower box underneath the cluster. If you place these underneath them, it'll draw them down sooner. What I've been finding is in these 10 frame boxes, uh, the bees want to build laterally before they want to descend down to the next box. So they'll complete this, they'll try to complete this whole 10 frame box first. And, uh, I, don't, I, I have them overwintering 10 frame boxes, but it, it just seems to me like it would be better if they would drop down, and I know they'll drop down sooner. So I save these, and that goes into the seed comb box. This here was the original bait comb that was with them. This is an old, uh, this was back from when I was using foundation. This is uh, some Duragilt foundation. I really don't like this stuff but I'll still use it as a bait comb. Here is the first... Oh, I just broke it. That was a really good... That would have been a good comb, but I got... It's a little chilly. This uh, was outside. And so, unfortunately, that is going to go into the bin. Now, uh, that's the nice thing about these foundationless frames. I can... I mean, yeah, it sucks. I got other bait combs. I could have used that, but I can really easily just take a cold capping knife and instead of having to spend all the time putting cleaning this frame up and putting more foundation in it, right now this thing is usable again. Just use my cold capping knife here. I don't care where you get it from. This one happened to come from Kelly Bees. They seem expensive for what they are, but I use them so much. I'm gonna be a little more careful with this one. And uh, here again, another great example of a foundationless frame. Typically the way I get these bees out is I will take this and bounce very gently. I don't know, together we'll see if I lose this one or not. But you can bounce the majority of these bees out. And those that don't come out, you can take a, a hive tool. What we're trying to do here, these have been in here a while. I let this one go too long. They kind of stink. We want to get the most of this out uh, without damaging the cone. And you can see it just lightly moving your hive tool across the, the top of the comb and we're not going for a hundred percent we're just going for the majority because dead hot or dead bees like this will will smell bad this was it does appear that the uh, that the wax worms are beginning to work on this comb it has not got that much damage but you can see here that uh, it has been damaged slightly uh, by wax worms up in here, but that that they'll fix that. This is a, a really good. At, if I was in a pinch and I was going to use it, need a bait comb, I'd use this. I'll probably use this in a in a box as a seed comb to have them draw down, and they'll go ahead and you can see it's all full of good worker brood. I'm going to be taking some measurements on those later to see what the cell sizes are. But I can tell by looking 
that they're uh, pretty small and uniform. Uh, again, here, this colony failed to build up, so of course it's not going to have a lot of comb in it. But the combs that are in there, as you can see, another foundationless. This one is one of the frames uh, that come from Kelly's. I don't place any wax on the top of them or anything like that. They just build on them perfect. So when you're wanting to build your treatment-free apiary, losses are to be expected. What, what, what your goal is over time to build up your apiary and to get it to where it can sustain itself. And part of sustainability is getting your bees. And this is just part of the process. Losing a colony of bees provides a yield to you so that you can then turn that yield into more bees. And over time, selection will take course on your bees. And as time goes on, the colony numbers at your apiary will increase. But this is a process that takes years if you want to have an apiary with 10 colonies in it, it may take three to four years to have 10 production colonies there. But this is something that's doable. And it can all be done with selection as opposed to using chemicals and treatments and putting things into your beehives that you don't need. This is Jason from LetEmBee.com. Hope you guys are having fun this spring because swarming is going on. And we can be out there catching these bees and allowing selection to build our apiary.